And Neen, let's move swiftly to our very fast-moving top story. In the past few minutes, the BBC presenter at the centre of the row has been named as Hugh Edwards. In a statement, his wife Vicky Flynn said her husband was, and I quote, suffering from serious mental health issues and is now receiving inpatient hospital care where he will stay for the foreseeable future as she asked for privacy for her family. He had been facing accusations that he made payments for sexually explicit images and sent inappropriate messages to four people with allegations that he broke COVID rules to meet a 23-year-old and sent messages including heart emojis and kisses to a 17-year-old on Instagram. Joining me live from outside BBC headquarters at Newport Broadcasting House is Talk TV correspondent Oliver whitfield Mirchich. So the news has now broken. We've been talking for en endlessly about should we name him, will we name him, who's going to name him? And Oliver, tell us what happened. Yes, well, that speculation now coming to the end after what has turned out to be a remarkable past 15 minutes. First of all, we heard from the Metropolitan Police that they would be taking no further action. Their investigators had found no cause for concern after speaking to the first young person, the first young person's parents, along with the BBC. A few minutes after that, we then received an email from the BBC saying that their internal investigation would now proceed. And then seconds later, we had the breaking news alert that Vicky Flint, who is the wife of Hugh Edwards, had named him as being the person, the BBC presenter, at the centre of these allegations. Now, Hugh Edwards has been a stalwart of the BBC News' 6 o'clock and 10 o'clock news coverage. Most recently, people will remember him for breaking the news of Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II's death only last year. So this is somebody who is a huge stalwart figure here at the British Broadcasting Corporation. We are hearing now, though, that Mr Edwards is in hospital suffering with a serious mental health condition. The toll over the past few days, the news, the speculation, the calls from various colleagues to come out with his identity has seemingly taken its toll. The BBC now will continue that investigation and they will be very concerned for the well-being of their staff member. Remember, they still have a duty of care over that staff member in question. But to sum up what we have learned here, we can now name Hugh Edwards as that BBC presenter behind all of the allegations we've been hearing about since Friday, that news breaking within the last few minutes. Obviously, uh, you know, there were a percentage of people who felt that they knew who the person was and they felt that they knew that it was Hugh Edwards. But among those who don't know, and that's about 50 million of the 60 million people who live in this country, so a huge number of people had no idea or didn't realise or weren't reading the speculation, there will be enormous shock and surprise, won't there? Because he has been, you know, a venerated, highly respected, almost a personal friend because he's been in people's living rooms and on their screens for such a long time. Um, a family man, I think a stalwart of the Church of Wales, from what I know about him, and somebody who I suppose people had certain uh, projections about what they thought he must be like in private, certain thoughts about his family life, etc. And suddenly people thinking of Hugh Edwards, I suppose with compassion, because he's obviously having a very difficult time of it and is in hospital, but also thinking of him maybe in a different way from the way they thought about him before. Yeah, you do not get to present the flagship BBC news programmes at 6 o'clock and 10 o'clock in the evening unless you are hugely liked, hugely liked by the viewers. This is somebody that the nation has trusted with their news. Important to note here that Mr Edwards is presumed innocent. There has been no sign as of yet of any illegal acts having been carried out. That further emphasised by the Metropolitan Police and their decision that they will take no further action at this point. But the details that have been emerging over the past few days, the pattern of communication between Mr Edwards and younger people using dating applications, using social media, the uh, various things that have been alleged will come as a shock to many. 
And not everybody did know. Here at the BBC, for the past three days, people have been coming, they've been sitting at the cafe near me having drinks, and quite often people would come to us and say, go on, tell us, who is it? And we weren't allowed because even though we weren't going to broadcast it, if anybody was to overhear, that would then be classified as slander. But we've had those repeated requests of people coming up to us to try to make sure that they had the correct name. Out on social media, it has been a total minefield because that initial decision on not to release a name meant that all of the other BBC presenters were then in some ways tarnished. They were questioned by the general public. Social media allegations came to light, including targeting the likes of Jeremy Vine, Gary Lineker and others. Rylan Clark even having to come out to say, no, it is not me who is at the centre of these allegations. Some of those presenters have threatened legal action against people for defamatory comments which were made online. The BBC itself has been shook by the allegations because it has called into question whether their complaints procedures are fit and proper, whether the way that they handled the allegations when they first came in back in May. Remember, there was only one attempt to contact the complainant's family via email, one attempt via phone call, which did not connect. And then it took seven weeks before the corporation spoke to Mr. Edwards themselves. So now the news is out there, the name is out there, but the soul searching here at the BBC will continue. There will be a big investigation into all of this, as well as the procedures around complaints, how they are handled and how they are raised. Oliver, thank you very much indeed. So I have in front of me the full statement from Hugh Edwards' wife, Vicky Flind, uh, and this is what she says. In the light of the recent reporting regarding the BBC presenter, I am making this statement on behalf of my husband, Hugh Edwards, after what have been five extremely difficult days for our family. I am doing this primarily out of concern for his mental well-being and to protect our children. Hugh is suffering from serious mental health issues. As is well documented, he has been treated for severe depression in recent years. The events of the last few days have greatly worsened matters. He has suffered another serious episode and is now receiving inpatient hospital care where he'll stay for the foreseeable future. Once well enough to do so, he intends to respond to the stories that have been published. To be clear, Hugh was first told that there were allegations being made against him last Thursday. In the circumstances and given Hugh's condition, I would like to ask that the privacy of my family and everyone else caught up in these upsetting events is respected. I know that Hugh is deeply sorry that so many colleagues have been impacted by the recent media speculation. We hope this statement will bring that to an end.